So now that we've seen the logic involved in doing a one-bit addition, and we've also seen the circuit that is required to do that one-bit addition, let's get a little bit more ambitious and let's design a full-fledged arithmetic and logical unit. So this ALU is going to be able to process 32 bits. It can also do more than just basic addition. So let's start with small steps. Let's first design a basic one-bit ALU. So this basic ALU is going to receive two inputs, A and B, right? So these are the two numbers that I may potentially be wanting to add up. And I'm only receiving these as one-bit inputs. And these two inputs are now fed to this block over here, which is capable of producing a sum and a carry out. So this is exactly the same logic block that we saw on the previous two slides. In addition to that, I've introduced an AND gate here and an OR gate inside this block. And the value of A is essentially being broadcast to all of these units, right? So these black circles over here show you that the intersecting lines are actually connected. Whereas in this case, the two intersecting lines are not connected because they don't have that black dot over there. So in this case, the value A is being sent to the AND gate. It's also being sent to the OR gate. It's also being sent to this one bit adder. So what essentially comes out of these three units is this is receiving inputs A and B. So what comes out of here is A dot B. What comes out of here is A or B. What comes out of here is the sum of A and B. And the carry out from that addition is now being sent this way. Okay, and, and the reason it's being sent down will be made clear shortly. You'll also see that there is a carry in coming from here, which is also being fed into this add unit, right? So potentially this add unit is adding the values of A, B, and a carry in, producing a bit for sum and a bit for carry out. For starters, you know, let's just assume that there is a carry in. Let's I won't go into details of where that carry in is being produced from just yet. Okay, but these are the three inputs, A, B, and carry in. Accordingly, the two input bits are being added, or or they're being added to the carry in bit to produce a result. Now the output of this ALU is, is going to be only one of these three operations. Okay, so I have a multiplexer over here, which is then going to connect one of these inputs to the output. And which input I connect to the output depends on my operation code. So I have an operation code, let's say zero zero, which says that I'm trying to do an AND operation. I have a code zero one that says I'm trying to do an OR operation and a code one zero that says I'm trying to do an addition, that is I'm trying to add up the two input numbers. So depending on the value of this code, one of these inputs gets connected to the output. So in order to use this, this one bit ALU, I have to provide two one bit numbers as input, and I have to provide an operation code telling what kind of operation I want performed on these two input numbers. And that's the result that emerges from this black box. So you can see that this one bit ALU is fairly easy to design with a few gates, right? So in previous slides, we've seen that, you know, you just need a handful of gates to implement this adder, right? So you're just going through two sequential gate delays to produce a result. Similarly, we saw a diagram for the multiplexer as well. Again, you're going through two sequential gate delays to produce the result. So this entire circuit is very simple and is capable of this very simple operation where you're just adding one bit numbers and performing these three operations. Now let's add more to this, right? The first thing I'm going to add is make this ALU capable of handling more than just one bit, right? So in our MIPS architecture, we were dealing with 32 bit values for the most part. So how do I do addition on 32 bits? So what I'm going to do is take this basic one bit ALU and chain it together, right? So this box over here represents the ALU that I showed you on the previous slide. So this is referred to as ALU zero because it deals with bit numbers zero. So if I'm giving a 32-bit value A and a 32-bit value B, the first bit of A, A0, and the first bit of B, B0, are fed as inputs over here. In addition, I have a carry-in. Since these are the first bits, the carry-in is definitely going to be a zero while, while I perform this addition. So let's say I'm trying to do an addition, so the operation code is going to be one zero. And so the result coming out of here is the sum of A0 and B0. There's also a potential carry out that is generated. That feeds as input to the addition of the next set of bits, right? So there's ALU1 over here, which is going to deal with adding up bit number one of A, bit number one of B, and any carry that was generated from the addition of bit number zero, right? So that's why I had the carry out coming at the bottom 
because the carries are basically fed to the next stages and the carry in comes from the top right so alu 2's carry in is the carry that was generated by alu 1 so when i'm performing an ad i provide these 32 bit numbers as input i feed a carry in of 0 and the addition keeps happening you know one alu at a time and ultimately the 32nd alu produces its final result the final sum right and it also produces a carry out which i'm going to ignore for now right but that's that's potentially an overflow bit which i'm going to handle later if instead i gave an operation code of 00, zero that means i'm trying to do an and what i need to perform is a bitwise and so each one of these alu blocks is going to take its corresponding input so alu 0 is going to take inputs a0 b0 do a bitwise and of those two bits and produce a result over here and that'll be bit 0 of the result and similarly alu1 alu2 they all do their independent and operations so there's really no carry out or exchange of information between these different alus if you're performing an and or an or operation so it's only the addition that in this case requires the carries to be propagated from one alu to the next this is therefore referred to as a 32-bit ripple carry adder because the carry is rippling from alu number zero all the way down to alu 31. so you can see that this alu operation also takes a little extra amount of time right so we said that going through one of these blocks over here requires close to a handful of gate delays but now you know once you provide the inputs a handful of gate delays later an output comes out a few gate delays later an output comes out here comes out here and so on right so essentially the delay for the entire add operation is going to be 32 times the delay for each of the one bit alus okay so this is going to be certainly more time consuming than the basic one bit alu that we had designed before now let's add a few more things to this basic alu let's add subtraction and it turns out that adding subtraction you know is not a huge change so if you're giving me two input numbers a and b if i want to subtract and do an a minus b the way to do it is do a plus b bar plus one right so adding minus b is the same as computing the two's complement of b which is done by inverting the bits of b and adding a one to it right so if i'm giving you inputs a and b and i want a subtraction to be performed what i essentially need to do is invert all the bits of b before performing the addition and then at the very end i also need to add a one to it okay so the way i do it is as soon as b comes in it also gets fed to this inverter gate over here so what comes in here is the value of b itself in its raw form what comes out over here is the value of b inverted so b bar and then i'm going to use a multiplexer to decide what then propagates through the rest of the circuit should i be adding a b or should i be adding a b bar okay so there's a b invert signal if i assert that signal then what comes out of this multiplexer is b bar if b invert is set to zero then what comes out of the multiplexer is the value of b itself right so if i'm trying to do a subtraction i'm going to set this bit to one which means that what emerges from the mux is b bar and then what enters this adder over here is a and b bar okay so what comes out of this adder over here is a plus b bar right so we are nearly done right there's still this one that i need to add and the way i do that is i go back to the circuit here and i see that when i'm doing addition i set the carry in of zero if i set the carry in to be one that's essentially adding a one to the result right so if i'm doing a subtraction instead of setting the carry in to zero i set the carry in for the very first bit to be equal to one and that automatically adds a one to the result so what comes out of this adder is a plus b bar plus one so by adding these few additional gates right essentially an inverter and a multiplexer and by being able to set this carry in sometimes to zero and sometimes to one this one bit alu is now capable of performing subtraction as well okay now note that this carry in of one is only set for the very first bit once i've done that if additional carries are being generated those will get automatically propagated to the next few bits right i don't have to keep adding a one to each one of the individual alus it's only the very first alu that needs to add an extra one and that is achieved by just setting this carry in to be one okay the rest of the circuit is going to behave exactly as before so if i again look at the control bits remember that zero zero indicated that i wanted to do an and zero one indicates i want to do an or a one zero indicates that i want to do an add 
if I want to do a subtraction, I'm still going to provide a code of 1, 0 because there are only three inputs to this multiplexer. And I, and I want to continue to use whatever is being produced by the adder, right? So even if even for a subtraction, the operation code is going to be 1, 0. But what I also need to do is that the B invert signal has to be set to 1 in this case. And in case of an addition, the B invert signal is going to be set to a 0. In case of an OR and an AND, also the B invert signal will be set to a 0, right? So I've introduced one more input signal which determines exactly what result is going to come out of this ALU. And by setting those signals appropriately, I can pick one of these four possible options. You'll also notice that one simple hack is to connect the carry-in for the first bit to the B invert signal, right? Because you'll see that if I'm trying to do a subtraction, I want to set B invert to 1 and I want to set carry-in equals to 1. And in all other cases, I want to set B invert to 0 and carry in to zero as well, right? So essentially this carry in can be connected to the B invert signal. Now let's also see how we can use this the same unit to perform NOR and NAND as well. So in the previous slide, I had circuit that kind of corresponds to all of this stuff here. What I've done is I've realized that, hey, you know, adding an inverter and a multiplexer is a great way to propagate either B or B bar through the rest of the circuit. I can do the same thing for A. So now I've added an inverter and a multiplexer for A as well. So I can either have A propagate through the circuit or I can have A bar propagate through the circuit, depending on the value that I set for A invert. Okay, so for both this AND gate and this OR gate, its inputs need not be just A and B. The inputs can also be A bar and B bar. So this adder, for example, is capable of doing A bar dot B bar which with De Morgan's laws is nothing but A plus B, the whole bar, which is nothing but a NOR circuit. Similarly, I can do A bar or B bar, right? So this OR gate can have inputs that are A bar and B bar. So it can perform A, A bar plus B bar, which again is nothing but A dot B, the whole bar, right? Which is nothing but a NAND logic functionality. Okay, so by setting the bits appropriately, I can have the circuit perform OR, AND, addition, subtraction, NOR, as well as NAND. And which one I'm performing is determined entirely by the operation code, as well as the values for A invert and B invert. Okay, so in a subsequent slide and in the next video, I'll go over the exact values for each one of these bits that determines the result that comes out of this ALU.